do you want to be when you grow up? According to a 2014 survey by Let's Talk Science, Canada's teens want to solve problems, help people, and make a contribution. But that's a dated question to ask. We live in a world where only 16% of working millennials see themselves with their current employer 10 years from now. 16%, that means 84% of the young workforce doesn't actively want to be any one thing. Instead, they're spending their careers hopping around to different opportunities to solve problems, help people, and make a contribution. But that's not what our industry or our education system is set up for. We are living in the midst of a professional revolution, scrambling to prepare the up-and-coming generation for jobs that don't exist yet, and the grand challenges we're leaving behind for them to solve. Challenges like making solar energy economic, engineering smarter medicines, and preventing nuclear terror. The tasks I've just listed are three of the 14 grand challenges for engineering in the 21st century. Challenges that, like it or not, we as a population are going to have to solve if we want to continue our life on this planet in the next 100 years. Let's take a look at how these challenges map to student interests. Students could solve problems by helping make solar energy economic. Students could help people by engineering smarter medicines. And students could make a contribution by helping prevent nuclear terror. Pretty much a perfect match, right? We can all go home. I hope you enjoyed my talk today. I'll be here all week. No. The problem is not quite solved, according to research. In fact, these students are facing a barrier to entry in engineering that is almost impossible for them to tackle alone. That being the complete lack of education in the role that engineering plays in society. And this starts young. If you look in the literature, you'll find facts like an experiment in 2006. A classroom of first graders were asked to identify examples of engineered technologies. The result was that the first graders were equally likely to choose their classroom parrot as an example of an engineered technology as a manufactured cup. And that's a pretty cute example, but the older the students get, the scarier the facts become. And you end up with things like high school students are more likely to associate engineering with machinery than problem solving. The K-12 educators have a poor understanding of what engineers do. And this one I find the scariest, the teens and adults strongly associate engineering with skills in mathematics and science, but much more rarely with creativity, problem solving, and a positive effect on the world. It seems no one is truly innocent in ignoring engineering. And today we're going to talk about why that is. But before we get into the why, I'd like to spend a little bit of time on the what, specifically what engineering is all about. If you consult a textbook for a definition, you will end up with something like this, a definition that I haven't even bothered to memorize because in the 30 seconds it'll take me to read it out to you, I'll have already lost your attention. So instead, we're going to call this the brick definition, and I'm going to read you one that I like better, that being Engineering is about the process of designing the human-made world. That makes a lot of sense if you look at the linguistics. The word engineer evolved from the Latin word ingenieur, which means to design or devise. The word science evolved from the Latin word scientia, which means the study of the natural world. So in context, a scientist will ask a research question for the purpose of furthering our understanding of the natural world, physics, chemistry, biology, the earth, the sun, the sky. But an engineer will ask a research question for the purpose of bending the natural sciences to satisfy someone's needs. 
And to let that idea settle with you, I'm going to take you through a few examples of famous fictional engineers that have bent the world to satisfy their needs. The first example being Wile E. Coyote. So he's not the best example of a good engineer, but you got to give him points for creativity. Here, you can see him bending the world to satisfy his needs by wearing a snowmaker as he skis down the hill to catch the roadrunner so he can travel at the same speed. Got to give him points for inventiveness. Next is Tinkerbell. She is a tinker fairy, by definition, which is basically Disney speak for mechanical engineer. So in her most recent reboot, she's more often seen with blueprints than in battle, and is famous for getting her friends out of a tight jam by manipulating the objects around her. And the last example I want to talk about is Willy Wonka from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now this man would be a Six Sigma black belt in real life. He has got incredibly tight production lines, an amazing supply chain, and an incredible research and development facility in food engineering and teleportation. I'd like to see Google even try to compete. So now that you guys have a better idea of what engineering means in the fictional world, let's take that into the real world and see what kind of engineering careers are available to real people who take engineering. So I could sit here all day and tell you about every single possible job someone with an engineering degree could pursue, but then we'd probably be here until like 9 p.m. and you'd kind of hate me because you'd miss the after party, and so instead, I'm going to take you through a mosaic of examples of industries people with engineering degrees end up in. The message I want you to take away, though, is that an engineering degree is like a master key. You can use it to open most doors. Doors like aerospace. Think about how people become astronauts. Biomedical engineering. Everything from engineering smarter medicines to designing robots to perform laparoscopic surgery safely. Business and entrepreneurship, how do we actually commercialize these ideas to change the world? Mining and metallurgy, seeking the materials that we need to create. Safety, quality engineering, my own profession, how do we ensure that the things we're putting out the door are actually going to work? Social media, think about how many engineers are sitting in the basement at Facebook. Finance, anything to intersect technology in the world of money. Law and intellectual property, what kind of skills do you actually need to write a patent? Technology and software, creating algorithms to save the world. And most interestingly, urban planning and civil engineering, how do we actually create the infrastructure that we live in? So you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned the two edge cases on the side of my diagram, that being TV stars and opera singers. So these are not the most conventional engineering paths, but I like to use the examples of Bill Nye the Science Guy and Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, who both have engineering degrees and later pursued a successful career in media. Lastly, opera singers. Isabel Bayrock Darian graduated in 1994 from U of T Engineering and has since gone on to pursue an incredibly successful career in the operatic arts. Engineering degree? master key. So despite all of these opportunities for students to solve problems, help people, and make a contribution, why is it that students are able to successfully associate science careers with things like discovering new facts, analyzing data, and saving lives, but not engineering careers? Instead, these same students associate engineering careers with things like repairing cars, driving machines, and setting up factories. Why? Maybe because we keep engineering buried behind definitions like this one. We engineers have a talent for satisfying the needs of others but we struggle with our own very evident need to better represent ourselves as a profession. And it's not like we haven't tried outreach before. In fact, if you look at the literature, governments have been funneling hundreds of millions of dollars on an annual basis to try and improve the public perceptions of STEM and engineering. For the most part, unsuccessfully. 
again. Why? Why spend all this effort? The problem is that we keep treating the symptoms of this with our outreach as inspirational band-aids, but not the cause. The cause being the K-12 education system is missing the E word in STEM. So the longer we continue to funnel our students into this tract, this system that hasn't changed, the harder it's going to be to get out an accurate perception of engineering. This brings me to the last part of my talk, that being, what can we do? And when I say we, I don't mean the government, I don't mean the ministry, I mean you and me. What can all of the people in this room do to take a part of this problem into their own lives? And to answer that question, I've prepared a call to action for each of you as homework. To parents and K-12 educators, I challenge you to say the E word. Parents, 94% of students consider you a valuable resource in career decisions, but only 23% of you take the time to talk to your kids about course selection. But that number goes up to 89% if you knew that math and science courses were not mandatory until grade 12, and that dropping them closes doors to careers such as engineering. Say the E word. K-12 educators. It is the responsibility of a teacher to raise the next generation of global citizens. You are arguably the second most powerful link, influence, and later, the only link between a group of minds and an experience that can change their world. Research opportunities outside of your profession, share that with your students, and don't you dare let those stereotypes slip out of your mouth. Never take that responsibility lightly. To other engineers, I challenge you to share your story. We are the ambassadors of the profession. And the only ones who actually know the answer to the question, what do engineers do? That is your responsibility, my friends, and take every opportunity you can to share that with others. To fellow students, I challenge you to be proactive in your own education. Take every opportunity offered by your school for a conference, talk, or STEM outreach event. Leverage the internet. Research career paths that are interesting to you. And most importantly, never stop challenging the status quo. If you see a better way to solve a problem, just solve it and don't let anyone stop you. And lastly, to everybody else, I challenge you to learn how engineering affects your life and share it. Talk to the engineers you know. Find out how they got into the profession and how it's changed their perception of the world the next time you buy something. Try and think about why you're buying it. How was it made? Who decided to make it that way? And why? Most importantly, talk about it. Because you never know whose future you might inspire. Thank you.